Hi, today I'd like to share a few tips and tricks with you. The first one I want to talk about is or concerns Jack for Windows. Now, most of the time I use a kind of default setup, so I make no changes whatsoever except for like the sample rate and maybe the frames slash period so everything else is left at default including the audio is set at duplex which means it uh, does or it connects both inputs and outputs and what I noticed is that now and then I would run into a few X runs here which are not necessarily errors, sometimes they're just warnings, but also when working in Ableton uh, the audio would sometimes start to glitch and I couldn't really figure out what it was until kind of by accident instead of using the default uh, duplex uh, setting for audio I used playback only. This means that uh, any inputs are ignored, in this case uh, the only input I have right now is uh, the microphone that I'm talking into. So normally with a default setting you would here see your microphone input and um, Jack also auto connects that input into whichever uh, uh, writable clients it, it finds. Um, once I started disabling that so I have a different setup now that I use most of the time which is playback only the, the rest is pretty much the same um, the X runs stopped so no more X runs everything went a lot smoother so if you do have a microphone hooked up to your computer um, and you're not using it to record in Ableton or whichever program you're using uh, just disable any inputs just select playback only and things will run a lot smoother. In Ableton Live uh, if you go into your audio preferences if you're not going to use any inputs so if you're not gonna record simply disable all the inputs so I think by default these two might be enabled just click on them to disable them, click on OK, so no inputs are enabled now and this will help keep your latency down and once you have done that uh, if you start up Ableton it will always opens up a new file for you uh, with an audio and a MIDI track and the audio track usually has external in selected uh, but since I just disabled it. I don't want any inputs. So in the audio track select no input and then go into your preferences and you can set this as your default. So if you go preferences then file folder at the top here there's a button that says save current set as default. So if you click on save uh, every time you start a new document the audio track will have no input. The next thing I'll do is I put a limiter and a utility on my master. Now I know there's uh, a lot of people saying that you shouldn't put anything on your master but while working a limiter um, will make sure that no clipping occurs and you don't blow up your speakers or when using headphones uh, your ears don't get blown off now to demonstrate the utility I quickly loaded up a track in arrangement view. Now what this does is uh, I have the width of the utility is set to zero and then I have mapped the on off switch to the first macro here. So if I turn the knob it switches the utility on and off and what this does is it allows me to quickly switch between mono and stereo or stereo and mono if, if, if you want uh, so the default is stereo and if I put this on I can hear the track in mono so let me quickly demonstrate that <laughs>
the previous step, this is part of my uh, default document. So if I start the new live set, the limiter and utility are on the master. The next thing that is part of my uh, default document is keyboard shortcuts. As you can see there's a bunch of them already defined. I just started a new document and those keyboard shortcuts are already there. The first keyboard uh, shortcut is the overdub which lets you um, kind of rehearse uh, something that you want to record, especially MIDI clips. So this is handy to be able to switch this on and off on the fly. Um, and this is mapped to the numeric pad on the, on the keyboard to the zero on the numeric pad. Now, the next thing that I have is, if you look at the timeline here, there's like these little flags that I added. These are called locators and you can add them if you put my cursor here and if I click on set it adds a new locator and this allows you to uh, jump uh, within your uh, timeline and by default I added 9 to them and if you look at the keyboard shortcuts I added a shortcut for every flag uh, or every locator uh, within the document and those are again mapped to the numeric keyboard so the first one is mapped to number one two three and so on because there's nine numbers on my numeric pad I have nine uh, locators so what this allows me to do is uh, as you can see the timeline is now at number one if I hit number two it jumps to number two if I hit number nine it jumps to number nine and of course you can still move these around when you're working on your project and the keyboard shortcuts still work so now I jump back to number nine uh, so wherever it is in the document and uh, this comes in handy especially if you're like zoomed in you know and you might be working on something here and you want to jump back to the beginning so you know that you have a maybe a piece of a song uh, that is in the beginning of the of the song so you quickly jump to it so now I jump to number one you maybe want to copy something here and then jump back to number nine and paste it here and by doing this with the keyboard shortcuts you can move within your document really quickly once again everything so the stuff on the master the limiter and the utility the keyboard shortcuts and the no input for the audio track all of that is part of my um, default document which is set in the preferences file folder and then save current set as default so once you have everything set up the way you want it just click on save and it will ask you to override so that's all for now i hope you find some of these useful and thanks for watching